right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1994 Suzuki Carry. To the left of me is a 660cc inline three-cylinder engine and down below is a four-speed manual transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here Suzuki Carry for a bunch of reasons. I've done a lot of its competitors. I've done the Honda Acti. I've done the Daihatsu Hijet. I've done the Subaru Sambar. And so I am slowly working my way through the K-Truck lineup. But the other reason is the fact that these are becoming more and more and more and more and more and more and more popular in the US as time goes on. This video was filmed in the beautiful sunshine state of Florida. If you would like to submit your vehicle, no matter where you are in the country, please head on over to ZachPradle.com where there's a quick and easy submission form. And the next time I travel the country, I might be coming to you. So let's get back to that 660cc engine found underneath me here in the Suzuki Carry. Well, the 660cc is actually the maximum size of engine that you can have for this classification of truck. This is known as a K-Truck, spelled K-E-I, and it's a classification of vehicle in Japan that has size restrictions as well as engine restrictions to then benefit with cheaper parking, you pay cheaper taxes, they're cheaper to register, so on and so forth. It's really to cut down on traffic and unnecessarily large vehicles. Well, that limit is 660 cc's, so that matches it perfectly. It is a three-cylinder. Some K-Trucks have four cylinders like the Subaru Sambar, although it's still 660 cc's this is only a three cylinder and it packs a decent little punch you have to remember that this is a really small truck so at the end of the day you're not pushing a whole lot of weight around and you don't need much to push it around now a really nice feature is the fact that it's under the passenger seat and you might be thinking that's kind of weird but other k trucks have it underneath the rear bed which is a pain if you ever have to service it and your bed is full like this Suzuki Carry. So with this, if you ever need to replace spark plugs, you don't need to empty the truck out in order to access it. Also, you don't need a screwdriver like you do with the Honda Acti. So the positioning of the engine is actually really, really nice. Like I said, paired to it is a four-speed manual. I would have liked a five-speed manual. A lot of other K-Trucks do have five-speed manuals. So just for highway driving, I would have preferred that, but not the end of the world. People don't take these on the highway, and you shouldn't take these on the highway. Last but not least about the drivetrain, this is four-wheel drive, and we'll talk about how to select that a little bit later on. But how does it feel to actually drive a K-Truck? Well, it's a souped-up, hopped-up golf cart, in all honesty. Like I mentioned, I would not take this on the highway. 50 miles an hour, 60 miles an hour, sure, okay, maybe. But for extended amounts of time, it's not really geared that way. This is for hopping around shops in Tokyo or getting around on a farm out in the country. So it wasn't really made for American highways, especially down in Texas, where you have 85 mile an hour speed limits. It's meant for around town stuff, and it's perfect for that. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have three very simple gauges. I've always loved this about K trucks. Off to the left is my coolant temperature, in the center is my speed, off to the right is my fuel. That's it. That's all I need to know. The steering wheel doesn't have anything interesting on it. Just says Suzuki with the horn button, although it is nice and easy to maneuver. Off to the right, I do have a climate control vent as well as a button for the axle lock. So this is kind of rare for K-Trucks. This actually has a rear locking differential. It's more oftenly found on cars more fitted for off-road use. More serious off-roaders, I guess, big old trucks. Well, this cute little guy has a rear axle lock, which can actually come in handy. Moving out of the door, I have my handle, crank for the window, and latch to get in and out, and that's it. Now, it is a completely flat door card to help try to maximize that space in the interior. However, I can tell you it's not doing a whole lot of good because my leg is still smashed up against the door. Moving into the center, I wanna talk about this because this looks a lot more car-like. A lot of K-Trucks just have flat center dashboards. This is actually sort of curved, which is a small thing, but unique nevertheless. I do have two climate control vents and the climate controls themselves, where to send it in the upper left, temperature in the bottom left, fan speed to the right, and recirculating to the right as well with the AC button. Then I have the radio, which funny enough, off to the left, that's the speaker. There's no speaker under the dash, there's no speaker in the doors. That is the speaker, that's it. So simple 
and it works. Then I get a little cubby down below that. Of course, cigarette lighter and ashtray. And then we come up to the shifter on the center console. The shifter is a little cheap feeling. It's a thick rubber. It's more of an economy shifter than what you would see in other vehicles. However, this is an economy little car. It's not a Bentley. It's not a Rolls Royce. So par for the course. And of course, there are no cup holders here in the Suzuki carry. So unfortunately, it fails the big friggin bottle test predictably for K vehicles, but still sad. Nevertheless, <laughs> Then I have the parking brake off to the left and the four wheel drive settings off to the right. Of course, two high, four high, neutral, and you can put it into four low. Lock that differential and you're gonna have a fun time getting out of that mud. The seats are fine. They're basically bolted to the rear bulkhead of the truck. They're not adjustable, so make do with it as you will. However, I'm not dying. I don't have scoliosis after riding in it, so I guess I consider that a win. Speaking of seats, however, we don't have any back seats, but we do have the bed. And you might be looking at the bed and saying, why didn't the owner clear out all the boxes? Well, I actually asked him to leave all the boxes in because I've reviewed so many K trucks with empty beds. This is actually used by a bicycle shop, Obscure Rides. This is their shop truck. This is used for parts getting them around town, moving stuff around town. So I asked the owner to keep everything in the back to really show off the capabilities. And going beyond that, you can actually lower all three sides of the bed to make it a complete flat bed. I don't know why this didn't take off in America. It really should because it's such a smart, fantastic idea. However, I guess it just didn't. But while we're on the outside of the truck, might as well talk about the exterior, and I like it. I love the big, goofy, round headlights up front. A lot of K-Trucks have square headlights. I like the cute, you know, sort of anime front circular headlights. I like that look. It also is finished in white, which I think almost every single K-Truck I've ever driven here on the channel has been white. It's kind of hard to keep track of which is which because they all look identical besides the headlights. It's fine. They all look the same, but they're utilitarian. And most of them are usually white because they either get painted by the businesses and white is the easiest color to cover and the cheapest one for Suzuki to put it in or you slap the logo on the side white kind of goes with almost every single color scheme so it's definitely a benefit there for the utility use but now let's get on to my final thoughts what do I think finally driving the Suzuki carry well it differentiates itself in a couple of ways first of all that front mounted engine underneath the seats Fantastic, I love that. And I love the round headlights. Besides that, it's pretty much the same thing that every other K truck has offered. However, this one's a little interesting. The owner actually told me that this was sold in South America. Now, of course, it was also sold as the AutoZam Scrum, which I would love to review just because of the name. But in South America, it was sold as a Ford and, and a Chevy. It was sold as both a Ford and a Chevy. This is the only time I've ever heard of this happening where two of the biggest competitors in the automotive space rebadged the same truck. That is really impressive and really funny to me. But overall, these are really starting to catch on in America and there's good reason for it. First of all, they're not that expensive. You can get these for a couple of grand and register them like any other car and daily drive them if you really want to. Here in America, we don't have a road going vehicle in this segment, in this size. Now we do have like Polaris vehicles, like the Polaris Ranger and things like that. But I actually went online and I spec'd a Polaris to have a roof, doors and a radio and a heater just like this truck would have, no AC. So you're downgrading to no AC with the Polaris and it was $19,000. This is not that. This isn't even a fraction of that. This isn't even a quarter of that. And so I love, love, love to see that. This is a really economical thing. And the Polaris can't be plated in most states. So you can't drive it as a daily car if you wanted to. You can't take it on highways. You definitely cannot take Polaris's on highways. So this wins over that. It just makes sense. And it's really cool because there's a local snow removal service in my area that actually uses little K trucks. They're a right-hand drive, they're Suzuki's, they're great. So that to me is really cool. I love K trucks, I'll always love K trucks, and that's why I was so excited to share with you the Suzuki Carry. 
Huge thank you to Matt and Tim from Obscure Rides. Obscure Rides is absolutely awesome. They let me take this car out today. They have a bicycle shop as well as classic cars, and they're always doing something fun and interesting. If you're in the St. Augustine, Florida area, please go check them out. Their information is found in the description below. I cannot thank them enough. They've been absolutely awesome through this whole process, and they've been a huge asset to the channel, so please go show them some love. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video. Video, comment on the video and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care guys.